Okay, then the last section really is just um, a few words specifically about being a rebirther and a rebirthee. And I came up with these sitting in the Cafe Barreso the other day. Remember you are a psychotherapist above, above all else. You're there to help a person change their mind by demonstrating. What can happen when someone accesses a very deep old trauma, you know, and it's really frightening or it's very strong emotions coming up. The ego doesn't want to look at this and will try and hold it back. And this is why safety in rebirthing is, is so important. This is why the more sessions you have, the easier it is for the person to release in your presence. It's as simple as that. You want to be a good rebirther, get rebirthed regularly for many years. This is why I don't give a diploma unless you've done at least three years of rebirthing. And that's minimum, really. And so this thing about when you're about to access some deep belief that's been holding you, it's about the mind. And what you're doing as a therapist is allowing this belief to become conscious. It takes a lot of safety, it's got a little enormous emotions attached to it. So as a rebirther, watch your thoughts while you're rebirthing somebody. Be vigilant for what's going on in your mind while the other person is breathing. And if you're not at peace, give it up. Hand it over so that you can be present again. You might suddenly have a judgment about this person. Oops, there I go judging this person. Help me see this differently. Get back to peace, get back to presence. The client can feel this. You know whether a, your, your, ther your rebirther is, you know, uh, thinking about their next date or something. You can feel it immediately when they disappear. So get yourself back as soon as you can. Um, you can invite the person to breathe, of course. Listen and follow your inner guide. And that could be to say something, not to say something, to do something like to touch or not to touch. When you're very, very still, when you're in your right mind, you'll know what to do. You'll sense it from their body language, from what they've said beforehand. So. Very important. Listen when to allow and when to push in a session. This is what takes a lot of practice by having a lot of your own sessions. There's a, there are times when the person is in the process of releasing something. You don't ask them to breathe when they're in the release already. But there are times when they're resisting and that's when you invite them to breathe. And that's, it's very subtle, the difference. And that's what you get from experience. So listen, do I push or do I allow? Or pull might be a better word. Be gentle. Please, this is all about safety. If you imagine every rebirthing session to be like a birth, how would you like to be received when you release into a new new layer of yourself? Do you want to be received with gentle, loving hands? Let go of expectations. Don't expect anything to happen in the session. Some people say, oh, nothing happened in that session. So what? Something is always happening in the session. If you take one deep breath, something will happen. It doesn't always happen in the session. But if you breathe for an hour, boy, something's happening.
in your system or in your consciousness. <clears throat> also very important, I really got recently, keep it non-intellectual while they're breathing. You can speak, but it must be things like you're safe, you're innocent, take more breath, something like this. If you start getting them, asking them a question that they have to think about, they're getting back to the intellectual brain and away from the reptilian brain, which is where we really want to go. Vinny, my trainer, she used to call these affirmations like you're safe, these archetypal affirmations, very fundamental truths about ourselves. We are innocent, we are safe. It is safe to let go. Safe to feel all your feelings. This doesn't get you into an intellectual thing. It's a reminder of the truth. See the rebirthy as innocent and see the Christ in them. And do not see them as a body. Anna was my great teacher in this. Those who weren't on last year, Anna was on third year and she died last year from muscular dystrophy. And she had many sessions with me and she taught me not to look at her body to see how her body was doing. But to connect with her, to connect with her mind. She chose on some level to go. Doesn't matter what therapy you do, if she's chosen, that's it. And then finally, being a rebirthee, what does that mean? Ask for what you want and what you don't want. Please, I don't want touch today. Or please touch me all the time, whatever. And during the session, this can change. Oh, move your hand one millimeter lower on my back or something. You have a right to do that. And the therapist won't, nece won't know necessarily intuitively. Tell him or her. Remember that you're safe and surrender. Trust this process. Trust that when you let go of your feelings that you will actually feel better. <laughs> when you've gone through them you will actually feel better. Let go of any judgments you have about your rebirther. You have judgments about your rebirth, how can you expect to heal? <laughs> no one's perfect here. Like Paul was saying, you might only be one step higher on the, on the mountain. Try and join in your mind with the rebirther and allow the spirit to do the healing. Simply joining really is all we have to do with another. and breathe. <laughs> okay, any any questions about that? Patient therapist relationship. Particularly about rebirthing. I uh, I'm a healer too, like a healer and um, just automatically I'm just getting into this healing, um, yeah, I'm, my hands just want to heal as well. Is that okay for me to just put my hand on the floor? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So it all works. It's all about intention. Yeah. Actually. Ultimately, it's always, always about the mind. Yeah. Um, and there are many, many forms that can reflect that. You know, I think the greatest, you know, some people can heal like distant healers and mm. people have healed people of <coughs> really serious diseases and it's, what we're told by the Course is that the healers are not doing anything, mm. right? But they're reflecting the decision of the patient. And if you're very, very clear yourself, you're a better reflector. Mm -hmm. 
And so Jesus, for example, who was, I think, even able to raise the dead, he was like a pure reflector of someone who had made up their mind on some level, probably unconscious level, to be healed. And they will be healed in the presence of that person. So again, the more work that you do, um, the more layers you've peeled off, the better your Reiki will appear to be. Okay. And the same with any, like with rebirthing, it's the same. Yeah. Like I've said to you before, I can teach you to be a rebirther in five minutes. Mm. Maybe the same with Reiki, I don't know. But it's peeling away your own layers that will make you a really good rebirther. You can be in a, in, a, in a room with 15, 20 people, even on your own, and just having a good time. And people are going through absolute hell. You're totally unattached, but present. Right? You, you can't be detached, but you mustn't be attached. Simply available for whatever. I'm thinking of, of, of this one, if I'm angry. The best thing is really to be with someone who does not copy it, who does yeah. not, with, as a, who could just look at it and say, ah, you are angry today. I mean, that's really the best thing yeah. that can happen. Somebody who can, can contain it, so I can learn to contain it. Mariana and I have had a few situations where one of us has been angry and the other laughs at the other. <laughs> like, if, if I get angry and she laughs at me, my first response is, for heaven's sake, take me seriously. <laughs> and then she keeps laughing and, and eventually I'll let it go. Right? <laughs> and vice versa. So it's the quickest way to get back. Justified. <laughs> you got a bit more angry than you see. Yeah. And I, I think it's, very, it's really nice to hear that it's um, not the ego doing anything. Because I also took some uh, Reiki uh, healing sessions and some cranial sacral therapy, and I was very split, really split. Because uh, <clears throat> ego, we couldn't understand it. Mm -hmm. Like, well, I'm not doing anything. Then mm -hmm. people start and wanted to talk and stuff. It's like very confused in that way. But now knowing that, okay, that is the ego part in me and that ego mind. somehow wanting to, well, doing something it just doesn't know anything about, mm -hmm. you know, it's really a weird anyway. Um, and I think that, that made me stop doing a, a therapy, because mm -hmm. it was very uh, confusing, very confusing. So this is a good... Uh, well, the, one of the very first quotes that uh, we read was, there are times and situations in which an earthly patient-therapist relationship becomes the means through which he offers his greater gifts, his spirit's greater gifts. And what that means is, some people will think rebirthing is their way, so they come to a rebirther. Some people will think Reiki is their way, and it resonates with them, and they'll go to a Reiki healer. And so all magic, and it is magic, um, is, is helpful because it, it's a doorway for someone to go through so that eventually they can change their mind. As I said, the clearer Philippa is, the more is, better results that she will have, and, and the same with her rebirth. Do whatever therapy excites you. 
to whatever therapy resonates with you. Um, I do rebirthing because birth resonates with me, and the breath has very big effects, it seems. But the breath doesn't change your mind, you change your mind. Breath, I think, is just one what, a very powerful way to look. It's a tool. But rebirthing doesn't heal you. Like you have to do the mind work with breath. Did you have, oh, oh, you're picking that up. <laughs> <laughs> I just threw it from the corner of my eye. <laughs> okay, any other questions? How many years did you run this course? <laughs> well, I did it for four years, about 15 years ago, and then stopped. Ah, okay, that was a break. And this is the fourth year this time. Okay. So you're going to keep on, or what? You're going to stop? <laughs> <laughs> you're going to stop? Uh -huh. <laughs> I'll, I'm going to stop in the second year. <laughs> You're in the third year. Well, wow. you said the fourth year you stopped. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you mean like you think it's a habit? <coughs> no, I'll, I'll go along on as long as um, I'm able. Another thirty years. Oh boy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, let's <laughs> take a breath. It's actually all about separation. <laughs> Those of you who have been on this course for 30 years, I just realized I've been telling you all the wrong stuff. <laughs> You're supposed to breathe out, not breathe in. <laughs> We had some lunch. Yeah. <laughs>